Well, good morning, my friends. It is a lovely, nice Tuesday morning, and we have a lot to do today. So, uh, Josh and I have been working on the tune on the 05 STI. We're pretty much wrapped up on pump gas. I haven't been recording a lot of the polls. I'm gonna give you guys some of those in a little bit. But today, we're gonna be swapping over, well, we're, we're hopefully gonna be swapping over to the E85 stuff. Now, I have to go to the dump for a couple reasons. I need to go dump some of that E85 that I have back there in those two yellow containers. Those two yellow containers are full of E85 pump 92 gas mix stuff from the 17 STI when I drained the fuel tank in that. So that fuel is about a year old at this point. Now it's not a year old, but eh, maybe it is. I don't know, it's old fuel. We're not using it. Um, it's probably gone bad at this point, so we're gonna go take that to the dump on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They like take fuel for free, so by all means, they can have all that. They can't have the containers, but they can have what's in it. I also need to get a new wideband controller kit installed in the car, so I wanna give a huge shout out to iWire because they sent over their wideband controller kit to help clean up all of my janky wiring. Now, while we're at the dump, we need to go ahead and see what the car actually weighs. Right now, Josh is using the uh, car's, I think it's the curb weight plus my weight uh, for the virtual dyno. So right now with that weight, the car is putting out roughly 534 wheel horsepower and I wanna say it was like 449 foot pounds of torque, something in that range. Uh, I do need to swap the exhaust housing on that turbo. We're gonna swap, we're gonna end up swapping to a V-band like 0.82 or 0.84 AR. I don't remember which one it was, but um, right now we're hitting full boost to like 5,000 RPM. We can bring that down a little bit to like 4,300 uh, if we have the right exhaust housing. So we're going to be swapping that out. So I've already let the taxi warm up a little bit. We're just going to jet over to the dump because I want to see what it weighs and I need to get rid of this fuel. So let me load this stuff up in the car. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Now one of these is full. One not so much. That's the one that's not very full. That's the one that's all the way full. So let me grab that. You can just go right. We'll say the idle on this thing sounds a lot more aggressive now. We got a race car he sounded idle. But let's go to the dump to go drop that off and see how much this big Bertha weighs. Any guesses on weight? I'm gonna say with me in the car, 30, 3325. That's my guess. 3325. We'll see. That might be too nice of a number. Uh, let's go see how, let's go see how much it weighs. I'm curious. Okay, so just got back from the dump, got those things emptied. I was gonna record there, but it's a dump. You guys really didn't miss much. Now I've run into a small problem. Normally I go and I get all my fuel from JBLM, Joint Base Lewis McCord. However, my veteran's ID is expired and they won't issue me a new one. So I can't get E85 from JBLM anymore like I used to. Now there's another E85 station up in Snoqualmie. It's about an hour away. So I think I'm gonna make the journey up there. I've got two of those VP racing containers back there, which will get us 10 gallons. I have another two of them showing up Thursday. So then we can store 20 gallons of E85. I might buy two more just so that way we can have 30 gallons. At this rate, I should just buy a 55 gallon drum of E85 and just do it that way. So I think for tuning purposes, so Josh and I can get started on it, I'm gonna go fill up those two 10 gallon things of E85. And if he says, let's hold off until we get more, we'll do that. But like I'm taking an hour long journey up to Snoqualmie. Let's go get some gas. Let's go get some E85. E85. So I can't believe I'm driving an hour to go get 10 gallons. I'm driving an hour to go spend money on fuel. It's absurd, but look, look at this beautiful view. We're like up in the mountains, which I, realistically I've only been driving for like 25 minutes. However, ah, God, dude, the bump. Realistically, I've only been driving for like 25 minutes and we're like already deep in the mountains right now. Uh, but here's the thing. I feel like this car resonates at the perfect frequency and the perfect amount of vibration to make you have to pee. Because I peed before I left the house, already gotta pee again. This is absurd, but hey, at least it's a nice day for a, like a cruise through the mountains. So this E85 station that I'm going to is up in Snoqualmie, which is about where we're, we're like a mile from Hobart and Issaquah. So, I mean, a lot of people local ask me where I get E85. Normally JBLM, but since I can't go get it from JBLM, Hobart, Issaquah, Snoqualmie area is the next spot. Now, I've been trying to find spots where I could do like a small poll for you guys, 
and like everywhere I go I'm seeing like a cop every couple of miles like parked on the side of the road or already pulled someone over so right now I'm just cruising up there uh, a I don't want to get pulled over again B I don't want to pay a speeding ticket and C uh, technically I guess we're still breaking in this motor so I'm trying to be a little bit nice to it we're up to like 257 miles after this trip of going up here and getting this fuel and going back down we should be around like 300 to 310 miles on the car uh, it's about I don't know 40 miles to this gas station from the house I guess we could do a small pull right here at this point so e85 was so much cheaper than pump gas are you kidding me e85 was like 375 a gallon pump gas right now is like 460 so I'm letting the car warm up on pump gas right now I have a little under a quarter of a tank we're then going to put those 12 gallons of e85 into the car get as much in there as we can to get ethanol content as high as possible we're shooting for above e70 here then I need to send a log over to Josh for a hot idle uh, he's going to verify that, then we're going to go out and do a couple pulls with this thing. Right now, I think we're set at 28 PSI, which is good, which is good. We're getting spicy. We're getting Josh's spiciness. So, let's put some, some E85 in this. Actually, let me upload the new tune, then we'll put some E85 in this thing. Let me start off by saying, I know, I know, I need to put these on a switch, the green test connectors. I haven't done it yet, okay? Don't don't hate me and pop my gas cap right there we haven't had e85 i haven't been on e85 in so long oh this is gonna be weird so our flex fuel sensor should be turned on now so change ecu map tanner send it smith bbr flex tune or flex fuel 28 psi oh i am nervous i just shouldn't be nervous but i am i have no reason to be nervous what am i saying we have over 300 miles on this engine. She's ready to send it. Oh, I gotta find the hoses for those first. I don't know where I put those, hang on. Where would I be? Tanner, where did you put these? Are they in here? They don't look like it. Are they in here? Are they in here? Dude, where did I put them? No! Where did you put the hoses for the ethanol containers, bro? They're not right there. I could have sworn that I put them up there, but they're not there anymore. Hello? Where did I put the donkey dicks? Donkey. Ah, found them. Okay, I only need one to start with. Yes, wizard juice. Yo, the, the E85, the car's yellow. E85 is known to be yellow for like fuel stuff. So this is a corn Subaru. The Subaru of, it's a corn taxi. Taxi corn. It's been so long since I've been on E85. What if I put this in and it's like E10? Now how depressing would that be? So this is about six gallons. So what, a 12 gallon tank? 12 gallon or 16 gallon? Let's see how she does on first startup. I should probably put this gas cap back on. right now I'm gonna let that ethanol go through the system but oh hell yeah boy e85 my butthole what's that 
That's E58, that's backwards. This is supposed to be E85. Um, well, we'll see. I'm gonna let this thing get up to uh, operating temp, so I'm gonna let it oil temp get up to like 90 degrees, 85 to 90 degrees Celsius, and I'll get this log for Josh. I don't know if he wants me to go to a pole on E60. Um, well, it's not even E60. It's not even good enough to be E60. It's E58, so we'll see what he says. Let me let this thing idle up, and then well, I guess we'll go from there. So I brought the smaller camera with me. I'm back up at the gas station. It's the next day. Oh, well, I'm back up at the 85 station. It's the next day. I tried driving the car around. I tried putting more fuel in it and I wasnn't getting anything more than like E49, E50 or so. So I just drove up here, burned off. A, it only took a quarter tank of E85 to get back up here. So just topped the car off, just refilled the containers, hoping that by the time we get back down to the house, by the time I put more E85 in it, we'll be up to like E70. So that way we can go do this for Josh. Let's turn it on. It's actually a really nice E85 station and it's much cheaper. E85 here is only, what, four bucks? Four bucks or so compared to like pump gas being like 460. E85, E85 is the way. This camera's really weird to use. It's just going to put us out. Do the gauge sweep. It'll probably take a minute for it to blend the ethanol in the car. I also got some mozzarella sticks. Cheese sticks. E48. <laughs> let it cycle through for a minute e54 it's more than we had before e52 stop it stop going down you i'm guessing that there was probably a couple gallons on the other side of the saddle in the fuel tank of pump gas which is what's causing this to read so low at 52 so let me drive this thing home let me see if we can refill it and get it back up to like e70 we're getting closer we're not at the E58 that we started at, but we're getting closer, so I'm gonna go drive this thing, get it up there more. So I was able to burn like a quarter tank of fuel coming back down from the gas station. I got both of those filled back up with E85, so hopefully that's enough to get this where I need it to. The pump that I got this E85 from said that it shouldn't be any less than E70 at minimum, and that's what we need to get to. So in theory, I need to get all of the pump gas out of there, if that is E70, to be able to get to E70, which kind of sucks. So that means I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get to power poles in this video or if it's gonna be in the next one because I don't, I still have like, what do I have three quarters tank of fuel in there right now and it's sitting at like E54. So I think putting in another quarter tank at E85, if that is E70, would probably bump me up to like E60 to E62. We're about to find out, but it's the struggles. Whatever, whatever amount of fuel that I had on the driver's side of the saddle that wasn't getting picked up by the fuel level sender is kind of screwing us right now but i mean it i can get it fixed within a couple of days of just cycling e85 through the car but we'll get there also i have an announcement that i'd like to announce with you guys so we are actually partnering up with high performance academy a lot of you guys have suggested them over the past couple of months uh, when going through building this engine trying to learn all this tuning stuff and things like that um, granted josh is tuning the car and he's doing a great job with it i've been going through a lot of high performance academy's efi tuning classes to be able to learn and understand everything that goes into this like their classes are actually informative you have to have like the drive to want to learn and know more however there's a lot of good info in there. Plus I just went through their engine build. Well, I'm still going through their engine building class, but I specifically went to like their engine break-in video on like brand new engines. And it seems like we've broken this engine in to their standards. Well, as close to their standards as possible. And that's actually putting load on the engine to help the rings seat against the bores. Because when you get a, when you get a block re-honed, it's got cross hatching on it. And that cross hatching helps the piston ring and the oil scraper ring to seal against it. Um, and engine load definitely helps. So if you guys are interested in any of High Performance Academy stuff, um, I'll put a discount code down below in the description for you guys, as well as the links to the EFI tuning class, which I really suggest you guys take if you wanna learn like the parameters and the dynamics of tuning as well as the engine building class because that's also a really good one that Matt's going through right now but let's put some E85 in this thing and hopefully try to bump this up to E70 so that way we can go rip on it I want to go rip on this car in E85 oh, I gotta move this this is Matt this is actually Matt's turbo that just got dropped off this is a precision 6466 um, but I don't want to open it because opening and show you guys because opening someone else's mail is a federal offense so it can just live right there till Matt gets off work God, I had this dong in there for pouring fuel now my whole car smells like E85 I have to make another trip to this fuel station I bet probably only to get well I have that whole other container I just need to keep burning through fuel and then refilling up to get ethanol percentage up at least my other two fuel can Containers show up. 
tomorrow, supposedly. So that should give us 20 gallons of E85 that we can store at the house instead of just 10 and whatever I can fill up in the tank. See what that bumped, up, bumped us up to. Still don't think it's enough. E52, literally nothing has changed. Let me try priming it again. All right, let's start it and see what it goes up to. E55, 56! Come on, baby! No, you're going the wrong way. Go up. 54, that's so annoying. 55, there we go. I'm gonna let it idle for like five minutes, see what it'll get up to. The idle on this thing sounds absolutely wicked. So uh, we're not getting above E56 right now. It's E55.7. So I'm just gonna go drive around, burn some fuel, try to keep like draining the tank, getting it down. I don't think I'm gonna put any more fuel in it until it gets like under half a tank, which means I'm probably not gonna be able to do power poles till tomorrow or Friday. So it kind of sucks. But hey, let's go drive it around because I can get into like baby boost. I can go into little boost. And when I say little boost, I mean like, like 10 to 14 ish pounds ish. Everything looks like solid and Gucci on that. So let's go do some baby pulls and go drive it around a little bit. I'm also well aware that I can pop off the return line on the fuel pressure regulator and let fuel drain out. But I just drained out or I just dropped off a whole bunch of fuel at the dump the other day and I don't want to go back if I can avoid it. Uh, plus I don't really have any more containers to store fuel in. Josh was like, just put it in a bucket. I was like, I can. I can do that. So she wants the boost. E85, this thing picks up quick. Trying to burn off some fuel. off the return line because I'm getting tired of this. We've got 55% ethanol. We need another 15. I will say we have made steady progress. We are up like 10% from yesterday on ethanol, which is good. This hill is turbo. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so I think when we get back to the house, I'm just gonna pull the car in the garage. I'm gonna pop off the return line on the uh, fuel pressure regulator. I'll just throw on a vibrant, I'll just make a quick vibrant AM line and just pump the fuel pressure regulator into a bucket with like a long line just to be able to get fuel out of this tank. Um, and that way we can put more E85 in, get it up to E70 like Josh is wanting. Because as much as I love driving the car around, I don't. I, like, I don't enjoy driving it just to burn fuel. Like if I drive it, I want to drive it. You know what I mean? Like if I'm driving my car, I want to drive my car. I don't want to just drive it to burn fuel. So here's what I came up with. So uh, just put it like a dash 645 off of the dash six hose, and then it just wraps in right up here. So fuel pressure all the return fuels just going back into this container here and then we'll use the good e85 that's actually e85 over there to put back in the car so i'm gonna let it cycle like this for probably like 15 20 minutes just so that way we can like drain the tank as much as possible and start getting good fuel in this thing I've been cycling fuel in and out of the car for the past hour or so. I don't know what time it is right now. And we're not getting anything better than like E64 to E65 and we need E70. So I don't know, I guess I just burn through this E65, try that fuel station again and hope for E70. Uh, Alex, who has been on, I think I pronounced that right. If I didn't pronounce that right, my dude, I'm sorry. Who has been on Josh's channel before, got E85 at the same station I did today. 
So if he got good E85 that's above E65, I'm thinking that maybe there that like the pump gas that I had is just screwing me right now. Like completely screwing me. So we'll see. I messaged him on Instagram to see what his ethanol percentage was, and this is just straight straight bullshit. Straight poop. Straight poop. Although this contraption I made seems to be working fairly well. Very well. So I mean hooking up the return line to go from the fuel pressure regulator just to that line into these canisters has been working great but like i said i'm still just mixing all of the same fuel that i've had in here so this is the last time i'm cycling it it's not going to get to e70 i already know it's not it's probably going to cap out at maximum e65.5 or something along those lines so it's about where that's going to be yeah it's just staying at e60 e64.2 garbage shit I need to burn through this. My shoe fits in my exhaust. So in the next video, we'll hopefully do some E85 poles because this has been awful. I legit had 1 16th of a tanker. That's what my fuel gauge read. Apparently not, apparently not. So with that, if you guys like the video, you know what to do. I don't really know what that, I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be one of the corners, you know the drill. I'll put in what you know what with the I'll just peace out, homies. I'll catch you in the next one. Woo!